Teachers, put your hands up if you can remember a time where you taught students a topic, only for you to tear your hair out as they forgot it later. Students, put your hands up if you can remember a time when you thought you'd revise something really well, only to forget it when it mattered. And then watch your teacher tear their hair out. <laughs> this forgetting in the classroom was an early frustration of mine as I began training as a secondary maths teacher five and a half years ago. During my training, the bottom line from my tutors was to teach for understanding. The understanding was the holy grail. If we could just get this right, our students would learn and they would succeed. The difference between bad teaching and good teaching ultimately was whether we taught for understanding. They told me that understanding would result in memory. I can remember, um, and so, so I, I dedicated a lot of time, being the naive, uh, dedicated teacher I was, I dedicated a lot of time into making the best lessons for understanding. Good questions, clear explanations, uh, well-structured activities, all the hallmarks I knew. I remember one particular occasion in my first year. I'd just finished teaching a double lesson on Pythagoras theorem, one of the titans of any secondary maths curriculum. I ticked all the boxes. The explanations were there. Students had plenty of practice time. Some had even managed to prove it. Amazing. And so, <clears throat> a couple of weeks later, I began with a quick and optimistic review of what we'd learned. So, class, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we learned Pythagoras' theorem, and did we? Came a small voice from the back of the classroom. Did we learn that? I don't remember. Well, let me tell you, that child received the most deathly of deathly teacher glares from me, the exasperated, failed sage on the stage at the front of the classroom. After all our algebra and triangle drawing and all those explanations I'd practiced in front of the mirror the night before, how could you forget that? Have you no heart? Children have a remarkable raw honesty to their feedback, which I appreciate every day. And yet this is just one of countless stories I could tell where students had forgotten what they'd previously learned, where students were unable to recall something I'd taught them previously. In fact, I found when setting tests, as few as 10% of some classes I taught could successfully recall everything that they'd learned in a term or a half term. And so to me, this begged the question, had they really learned it at all? You see, going with the definition of um, learning as a change in long-term memory, I began to think not. There hadn't been a change in long-term memory. And so I began to ask myself, what if? What if there was more to this model? What if there was another factor or more factors um, that influenced how, students, how well students learn and retain information. And so I began to research. I read books, I read cognitive science research papers, I read education journals, I listened to podcasts. And that's how I came across the work of some psychologists by the name of Robert and Elizabeth Bjork. Their theory of memory is that it's based on two dimensions or two factors rather than one. Firstly, Storage strength, i.e. Um, how well connected a memory is to other memories in the brain, i.e. understanding. Um, and a second dimension, retrieval strength, how quickly or effectively a memory can be recalled. Like all good maths teachers, I like a graph. So here's one to explain this a bit further. I'm going to go interactive again for a moment. Please forgive me, I am a teacher. Um, and I'm going to give you some examples of some memories and where they might belong on this graph. Put your hand up if you can remember what you ate for lunch earlier today. Yeah. Put your hand up if you can remember what you ate for lunch on this day last year. If this was just an ordinary lunch, chances are um, storage strength is not particularly high. That memory is not connected to other memories in the brain. So both of those memories of lunches would be low on storage strength. However, 
the memory of what you ate for lunch today would have a higher retrieval strength because it is a more recent memory. So maybe they would belong over there. Low on storage strength, um, but different levels of, of retrieval strength. Hands up if you can remember the birthday dates of your spouse, uh, siblings, best friend, or, or children. Hands up if you can remember the names of all the children in your year one primary school class. Yeah, surprising few. Um, birthday date of a significant other has a high storage strength because it is well connected to other memories. It also has a high retrieval strength because you have to recall it often. And if you're a married man here, you know your wife won't let you forget it. So that memory would be high on story strength and high on retrieval strength. The names of children in your year one primary school class also has a high story strength. It is well connected to other childhood memories. However, chances are you don't have to recall that memory very often. And so that would be lower on retrieval strength, perhaps down here. I knew that as a teacher, I could teach for good storage strength. But what this theory taught me is that retrieval strength is an equally important factor for memory. That for students to learn something and remember it, they needed to do more than just understand it. That's not enough. They need to be practicing recalling it successfully. And so how does this relate back to my valiant but failed at attempts to teach for great learning? Well, what this model taught me um, is that uh, these things that we once uh, understood well, like the student who'd learned Pythagoras theorem, but have since forgotten, these memories haven't actually been forgotten at all. They've just become inaccessible. They currently have a low, story, uh, low retrieval strength. Just like the names of people in your year one primary school class. Now, if I were to give you a class photograph of your year one primary school class, I reckon you could probably recall a lot of those names. That would then boost the retrieval strength of that memory. In the same way, my class needed to be challenged to recall and apply Pythagoras theorem in order to boost the retrieval strength of that memory. And this is what we can often neglect as teachers and educators. In our bid to ensure that school is not just all about testing, we denounce the mini quiz or the little test as straight from the devil itself and ensure that we never demand that students recall previously learned information. Or as students, we never test ourselves because it's easier just to highlight some nice notes with a nice yellow highlighter. And yet from what I've seen in the research, testing ourselves is one of the most powerful tools for learning. You see, every time we successfully recall knowledge, we boost the retrieval strength of that knowledge. I'm currently finishing um, my master's in maths education, um, and I've been putting some of this research uh, and theory into practice uh, with my students, regularly practicing this recall in order to boost retrieval strength. This is some of the feedback I've received. I found it amazing to have students discussing the memories of what they've learned and reflecting on how they can improve these. Through all this theory and this classroom experience, what I've come to realize is that this is not a good enough model for learning, but that this is a much better one. And yet, the current educational paradigm is that this this regular recall practice mainly goes on in the period just before an exam, i.e. cramming, okay? But this is the point where students make the most progress. I believe that this model should be a mainstay of our schooling, both from primary, secondary, and beyond into further education. I believe that as teachers, we have the responsibility not just to ask the question before planning a lesson, 
how can I convey this concept as clearly as possible? But also we should be asking, how will I ensure that my students remember this a week from now, a month from now, a year from now? And as students, we have the same responsibility when learning something. How will I ensure that I remember this a week from now, a month from now, a year from now? More widely, I would like to see all of us who are invested in education, whether we are teachers, stakeholders, or learners, engage with the cognitive science behind, behind how learning actually works. What if we, as a learning community, took this opportunity to make a change, to improve our understanding of how learning works? We could learn more effectively, grow stronger, and be part of a more educated society. Thank you.